Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's program. Today's program is taken right out of the hypertrophy files. And the hypertrophy files are part of a series of lectures that I produce for you doctors uh, out of the basic science series for chiropractic continuing education. And today's program uh, is approved for six hours of continuing education in the general category uh, by the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. So uh, welcome to the program and thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy today's program uh, quite a bit and that you get a lot out of it. The focus of today's program is going to be on two words and these are two words that I tell almost every one of my patients on almost every single visit that I have with them. And uh, these are some profound words and uh, you don't have to say really much more than these two words to your patients. And uh, if you're able to get a head nod from your patients uh, after you repeat this mantra uh, to them, you'll know that you're doing the very best thing that you can for them. And this applies to you as well. Uh, today's program is entitled Exercise Recommendations for Chiropractors and Their Patients. And so today's program is directed, first of all, doctors at you because uh, I know uh, what your life is like and I know what it's like to be a chiropractor because I am a chiropractor and I've been a chiropractor for 27 years and I know that being a chiropractor is, uh, is a physical job. It's, uh, it's a physically demanding, it's a heavy lifting job. So we have those physical demands on us also uh, as respected health care uh, authorities we also serve as role models to our patients so it's important that we practice what we preach and so I direct this program first and foremost to you doctor and then also uh, to your patients and the mantra and the two words that I constantly re reinforce both to myself and to my patients and, and that I want to impart to you and your patients is to up muscle up muscle it's the philosophy of this program and it's my uh, sincere opinion that we need to continually focus on increasing the muscle mass content of our body and this is regardless of age in fact uh, as we age through our uh, 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s <laughs> I don't know where you lie on that spectrum, but uh, speaking for myself, uh, I'm probably at the midpoint of that spectrum and, and inching perhaps <laughs> slightly past the midpoint of that spectrum. And as we do age, it becomes even more important to focus on upping the muscle mass content of our bodies. So that's the whole purpose of our uh, program today is to learn how to preserve muscle mass and how to promote and grow new muscle mass regardless uh, of our age, regardless of our physical condition, or regardless of any limitations that we may think that we have uh, that prevent us from uh, doing just that, from building new muscle. So this is called the hypertrophy files and this is one of several lessons in the hypertrophy files which is a series of exercise, dietary, and lifestyle techniques uh, designed to promote muscle hypertrophy. So today we're going to talk about lesson number one from the hypertrophy files. And today we're going to focus on some exercise techniques involving and focusing on three very narrow principles. We're going to narrow this entire concept down to three simple, effective, and extremely powerful techniques that you and your patients can implement right away that will tremendously improve and enhance uh, the benefits that you get from standard exercise, whether those be performed in a health club or whether those be performed at home uh, with simple and inexpensive implements. And those three simple principles that we're going to focus on in this program include number one the biarticular muscles, the eccentric muscle actions, and the pre-stretch principle. 
and uh, of course we'll elaborate over the next six hours uh, on these three principles. So if you're ready with me, uh, I'd like you to grab your handout materials for your note-taking uh, benefit. Grab you a snack and a drink and uh, get ready to get down to some brass tacks of anatomy, physiology, and the science uh, behind muscle hypertrophy. Okay, so our basic formula for hypertrophy training then is we're going to engage in short duration, high intensity, heavy muscle activity that targets the type 2B muscle fibers. So are there specific recommendations in the literature and uh, does the research point to a, an exact recipe uh, that we can follow if hypertrophy training uh, is indeed our goal? Well, it turns out that that uh, is exactly the case and uh, we look to no less an authority than the National Strength and Conditioning Association and uh, there was a study published in uh, 2010 in the Strength and Conditioning Research Journal. And uh, this, by the way, is recent research. Uh, this is 2010. And the title of this study was uh, about muscle hypertrophy. It was about the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy and their application to resistance training. So what are the mechanisms that promote muscle hypertrophy and how do we apply those mechanisms uh, to resistance training? Well, this study uh, came out with, a, with an exact recipe formula that we can use as our guide for constructing our uh, hypertrophy training programs. The first variable that we can manipulate <clears throat> to promote muscle hypertrophy is the intensity of our exercise. Now we, we stated uh, earlier on that uh, the intensity for stimulating the type 2B muscle fibers has to be high intensity. Well according to this study uh, published in 2010 the intensity needs to be greater than 65 percent of the one repetition maximum to recruit and fatigue the highest threshold motor units, which as we said earlier are the type 2B muscle fibers. So the intensity needs to be greater than 65% of the 1RM. Well, what is the 1RM? Many of you are probably familiar with the concept of a 1RM. For those of you that are not familiar with it, a one repetition maximum represents the absolute highest amount of weight that can be lifted in any given uh, exercise for one repetition. In fact, the weight is so heavy that it cannot be lifted for two repetitions. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're considering the bench press. Well, if your one repetition max, meaning the most amount of weight that you could possibly lift, for one all-out, gut-busting, superhuman effort was 200 pounds. 200 is then your 1RM. In other words, you couldn't even do 201 pounds. Or you couldn't do 200 pounds twice. 200 is absolutely the most you can do for one single super Herculean lift. Well, according to this study in uh, the Journal of Strength Conditioning Research, in order to get any recruitment and fatigue of the type 2B muscle fibers, you would need to then bench press with at least 65% or 130 pounds. Bench pressing with 100 pounds or 120 pounds does not recruit the highest threshold motor units according to the size principle. That amount of weight and that percentage of the 1RM can be lifted only by recruiting the small type 1 muscle fibers and small populations of type 2A fibers. The type 2B fibers simply aren't needed to lift a weight that's that light. The weight needs to be 
uh, greater than 65% of the 1RM and that applies across all exercises, upper body exercises and lower body exercises as well. The repetitions, the number of repetitions that you perform a given exercise for needs to be in the moderate range and moderate repetitions is somewhere in the range of between 6 and 12 repetitions anywhere from six repetitions per set to as high as 12 repetitions per set. If it's more than 12 repetitions per set, the weight is therefore too light and not heavy enough to recruit uh, the highest threshold motor units or the type 2B muscle fibers. Uh, the volume of exercise, which is defined as the sets times the reps times the load, uh, needs to be high, high volume, a high quantity of work. So let me give you an example of uh, volume. Again, uh, considering the bench press, if we did three sets of the bench press, three sets of 10 uh, with 100 pounds, our volume would be 3 times 10 times 100 or 3,000. Well, let's say we did two sets of 10 at 100 pounds and a third set of 10 at 120 pounds, now our volume would be 3,200 higher volume. So in order to promote hypertrophy and recruitment of the type 2B muscle fibers, you need to have high volume. It was pro proven in this study that high volume uh, was much more successful at uh, recruiting the type 2B muscle fibers than was a single set. And the philosophy on that is easy to understand. As the volume increases, the smaller and lower threshold motor units uh, fatigue, leaving the workload to be done uh, by the higher threshold and fresher uh, type 2B uh, fibers and the higher threshold motor units. So we need high intensity, moderate repetitions, uh, and high volume uh, training programs. Now in order to promote high volume, uh, this study recommends that uh, we use a split body routine wherein the body is divided up into muscle groups and multiple exercises uh, for each specific mu uh, muscle group are performed. Um, exercises should be selected such that uh, we preferentially uh, use multi-planar, multi-angled, multi-joint exercises using a variety of different exercises. Uh, we want to focus on multi-joint movements involving large and multi-articular muscles. And this is kind of a, a new thinking uh, in uh, the recent years. I remember back in the 80s and uh, 90s uh, where the emphasis on hypertrophy programs was on isolation exercises. Exercises uh, that target only one specific muscle group such as biceps or triceps or calves etc. And then exercises were performed to uh, really pound uh, that particular muscle with an isolation movement. Well, these days, and according to this study, uh, much better to use uh, compound movements that target multiple joints, many different angles, and large multi-articular muscles because that is what allows uh, the use of, of the heaviest weights so that the type 2B muscle fibers can be recruited. <coughs> Uh, we want to use short rest intervals between sets, uh, 60 to 90 seconds between sets to uh, keep the intensity high. And we do want to promote training to failure. Uh, failure meaning taking your repetitions all the way to the point where you can do no further repetitions. Uh, meaning if you set out to do a set of 10 repetitions, uh, you could not then complete the 11th repetition because you failed uh, after the 10th. So this study does promote failure training, however, recommends that 
we integrate failure sets and exercises that include training to failure uh, periodically, not on every set and not on every exercise and even uh, not on every session of training. Okay, and then the final recommendations uh, uh, that come out of the strength and conditioning research is that to promote maximum activation of the type 2B muscle fibers, we want to use uh, fast explosive type movements on the lifting or concentric phase uh, of the exercise and on the, on the lowering phase of the exercise we want to use slower repetitions and the slowing down of the weight on the descent phase during these exercises this is known as accentuated eccentric exercises uh, exercise technique and as I said earlier every weight training exercise is like a coin it has two sides there's a lifting of the weight and there's a lowering of the weight so if we go back to our example of the bench press, when you bench press and you press that bar off of your chest to full extension of your elbows, that's the concentric or lifting phase of that exercise. That portion of the, of the exercise, we want to perform explosively. Explosively allows us to bypass these smaller and lower threshold motor units and get right down deep into uh, the type 2B muscle fibers. Then on the lowering of the bar back down to the chest, you want to provide some back resistance to the uh, descent of that bar. Uh, realize that the descent of the bar uh, is controlled by gravity. That thing wants to crash down onto your chest. Well, by providing some back resistance to that bar, sort of like uh, an engine uh, uh, applies engine braking uh, to a truck that's going downhill that slower repetition uh, and that added stress is that's known as accentuating the eccentric phase this also preferentially targets the type 2b muscle fibers now the uh, eccentric phase of uh, of these exercises has been shown uh, to have greater uh, hypertrophic capacity or greater hypertrophic propensity than the concentric phase of the lifting exercise for several different reasons. Uh, during the eccentric phase uh, of the uh, exercise, there is greater muscular tension produced under the same loading condition, meaning that again considering the bench press when we lift the bar we have 200 pounds on it when we lower the bar we have 200 pounds on it in other words it's the same loading condition but there's greater muscular tension produced in the lowering phase than there is in the lifting phase and this this seems to contribute uh, to the greater hypertrophic effect uh, of eccentric exercise compared to concentric exercise and for that reason many of the exercises that we're going to go over here in today's program uh, accentuate the eccentric phase of the exercise second uh, factor that contributes to the hypertrophic superiority of eccentric exercise compared to concentric exercise is the reversal of the size principle meaning that eccentric exercises as we stated earlier uh, uh, selectively recruit the type 2B muscle fibers which is the type of muscle fibers most prone uh, to hypertrophy and then finally uh, eccentric exercises uh, have to be implemented with caution because uh, compared to concentric exercises the eccentric exercises promote more muscle damage and micro tears within the muscle than do uh, concentric muscle exercises. However, uh, it appears that some degree of muscle damage is a necessary stimulus to promote compensatory muscle hypertrophy. So uh, it's kind of a fine line with these eccentric exercises. They, 
they give us the most bang for our buck, but they ha have to be handled uh, carefully because they do promote increased muscle damage and um, may require <clears throat> greater time uh, to recover from a bout of exercises that involve eccentric exercises compared to exercise bouts consisting entirely uh, of concentric exercises. So that's a lot. That's a lot of recommendations. So how are we going to implement all of these factors uh, into a, a, a program, a hypertrophy training program that's time effective and that's effective for multiple populations, including uh, special populations that may have issues that prevent them from throwing themselves full on into a heavy and intense uh, uh, weight training program. Well, as I said earlier, we're going to focus on the 80-20 principle and we're going to pick uh, the most effective exercises, the most effective uh, techniques, and the most effective principles of weight training uh, to uh, get us to the promised land. And the big three techniques that I'm going to rely on for the balance of this program are as follows. Uh, technique number one, uh, as the study from the Strength and Conditioning Research Journal indicated, we're going to focus on the biarticular muscles. Biarticular muscles. Now, what's the opposite of biarticular muscles? Well, the opposite of biarticular would be uh, uni articular and I'll elaborate on uh, which muscles of the body are biarticular muscles and which muscles are uniarticular uh, here very shortly. Now focusing on the biarticular muscles allows us to perform exercises that are multi-joint and allows us to uh, exercise uh, large muscle masses all at the same time thereby allowing us to lift more weights than if we focused on simply uniarticular muscles, unijoint muscles, and isolated uh, joint actions. So that's technique number one, is to focus on uh, large muscle masses and biarticular muscles. Technique number two is to focus on eccentric muscle actions to selectively recruit uh, the type 2B fibers and to contribute uh, to muscle damage which then gets healed uh, with compensatory hypertrophy. And then te technique number three is we're going to focus on uh, what is known as the pre-stretch principle. And the pre-stretch principle is based upon the length tension relationship, <coughs> the length of muscle and the amount of tension that any given muscle can develop there's a relationship between the length of the muscle and the tension that it can develop. And the pre-stretch principle uh, depends upon the length ten tension relationship. And when we focus on uh, the pre-stretch principle, this is, allows us to take advantage of what's known as the stretch shortening cycle. And I'll elaborate on that as we go along here, but uh, the stretch shortening cycle allows us to use heavier weights, thereby uh, selectively recruiting uh, the type 2B muscle fibers. Now, each of these techniques that I'm describing here uh, also has, uh, are also appropriate for special populations. And I'll provide specific examples as we go. We may need to make certain modifications to the exercises through manipulation of uh, range of motion or weight and other variables, but these are our baseline uh, principles that we're going to rely on. We're going to focus on biarticular muscles, we're going to focus on eccentric muscle actions, and we're going to focus on the pre-stretch principle. Now, it's quite interesting because some of the exercises that we do uh, contain within them each of these three techniques or the exercise can be adapted or modified to include 
each of these techniques. And these exercises that focus on biarticular muscles, that include eccentric muscle actions, and that do contain a pre-stretch uh, component, those comprise the very best of the best of the best exercises. Remember, that's the whole philosophy of this program, is to select those very few exercises that give us our greatest bang for our time increment and effort, effort expended while we're in the gym. And some exercises uh, are perfect exercises in that they contain each of these three uh, components. Some exercises, on the other hand, cannot be adapted uh, in a way that they do include all of these three components, but you may be able to squeeze at least two of these components. For example, some exercises, because of the apparatus or the piece of machinery that's uh, involved, does not allow much in the way of a pre-stretch, but it does allow you to do eccentric muscle actions and it does uh, involve multi-joint movements. Well, that's a pretty good exercise. Not as good as an exercise that includes all three techniques, but better than uh, exercises that only contain one technique. So we're going to focus on the big three. And where possible, I'm going to show you adaptations to some of the conventional uh, exercises that are performed in uh, gyms and health clubs nowadays and show you how those exercises can be improved by integrating uh, one or more uh, of these technique recommendations. In conclusion, uh, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I hope you enjoyed this program. Uh, now you have a 20 question uh, examination that I need you to complete and either fax or email back to me. My fax number is on the top of the examination form and just as soon as I receive your examination form, uh, I will provide you with a certificate of completion that you can use for your Board of Chiropractors uh, continuing education credit. For now, I want to leave you with uh, the website uh, for chiropractors, which is entitled ezchiropracticceu.com. We're always coming up with new programs, so check the website uh, frequently for new programs designed to help you uh, succeed as a chiropractor. Again, Dr. Perry Carpenter wishing you great success. If there's ever anything I can do to help you, feel free to call. Again, thanks for being with me on this program, and best of success.